A pleasant hello to everybody and welcome to the next installment in our physical material series here. This tutorial is going to be centered around glass materials. We'll be creating a basic glass material, then we'll be going over how to properly and physically accurately tint it, and we'll also add some imperfections to it because you know, glass can get really dirty real fast. And then last but not least, we'll be showcasing how you can properly model liquid in your glasses. All right, cool. So let's start at the very beginning here. To set up a glass material, you can obviously leverage the really cool and useful presets that you have available right here. Or, you know, alternatively, you can just create a material from complete scratch. Now, to do that, let's first make sure our metalness mode is set to non-metal because, well, glass is a non-metal material. Then you'll want to enable refractions. And now, if you take a look at the interactive renderer, you'll notice that the material is obviously too rough looking. So then you'll want to go under the base layer and you'll want to lower that roughness to get our material looking like a proper high quality glass material. Now, if you're into details, well, every glass is probably a little bit of imperfections in the refractions and the reflections. So maybe we could up that roughness to 0.01 just so we get that ever so slightly more realistic look going. You can then play around with the IOR value as well, but it obviously depends on the type of glass you're trying to recreate. For most standard glass materials, a value of 1.5 is fine, but just to offer an example, say a pure flint glass material would have an IOR value of 1.6. And you can get these values online if you just search for IOR values for your particular material. There's plenty of measurements available online by awesome people who are kindly sharing their knowledge for free. Okay, but by and large, we already created a nice and realistic looking glass material here, so kudos everybody. All right, so now we have this glass material here, and what if we wanted to tint it? Because as you might have seen in the real world, glass can have a tint to it. So let's explore that for a minute. First thing we'll need to do is we'll need to enable volumetric scattering because that's the proper physically accurate way to go about it. So let's go under that media options rollout. And in here, what's going to be the most important thing for us to set first is going to be the absorption color parameter. So what you want to do is you just want to set it to a color that you like. So in our case here, we're going to go with this reddish color, sort of kind of like this. And then what you want to do is you want to dial in the distance parameter and dialing in the distance is a bit of a trial and error type of a thing. You adjust it until it looks the way you want it to look. Now, if you watched our translucent plastic cup tutorial, then you already know how things work here. But in case you didn't, well, here's a quick recap. With the distance parameter, we are basically defining the distance the ray travels inside our material slash object. And at that distance, it will be the color we've set it to be with the absorption color parameter. If the ray travels even further than the distance we've specified, well, then it'll get even more and more absorbed until it eventually gets completely absorbed and then your material will start looking very dark. All right. And that's pretty much the gist of it. That is how you tint your glass materials in a physically accurate way. Not that hard, is it? All right, so then we have our tinted glass here. It looks fine and all, but it actually looks too fine. It's too clean, too perfect, if you will. And so let's introduce some imperfections to it all. Typically with glass materials, as soon as you touch them, you leave your greasy fingerprints on them. And that's typically one of the most common imperfections on glass materials. Uh, yes, there can be dirt on them too. That's also kind of common, but the workflow is going to be pretty much the same as the one we're going to showcase here for the fingerprints. So as the main ingredient, we'll be using this pretty darn cool, high resolution fingerprint riddled imperfection map that you see right here. Okay. Now, we could just plug this map into the base roughness slot in our glass material. That would most certainly create some nice looking imperfections because fingerprints are basically this refractive 
probably a little rougher looking substance that's on our glass material. And this is a perfectly valid and totally cool workflow, but we will take it up a notch here. And the thinking behind our entire process that we're going to showcase here will be that fingerprints are basically their own material. They're basically a fat slash grease like material. They might have a slightly different IOR to them and potentially other different properties as well. So what we'll do is we'll add these fingerprints on top of our glass material with the help of the Corona layered material. And so the fingerprints are actually going to be their own material. So uh, let's create a, a layered a layered material here. Let's apply it to our object, to our glass. And now let's plug the glass material to our base material slot here. And then uh, let's also just unplug that uh, fingerprint map from the roughness slot while we're at it as well. And all right, so for the fingerprints themselves, uh, we'll bring in another Corona physical material and we'll just plug it into the layer one slot in our Corona layered material. Now, as a mask, we're going to be using the fingerprint imperfection map. So we'll just plug it into the mask one slot. Okay. And there we go. We're adding some imperfections as a separate material on top of our glass material. So at this stage, the imperfections, as you can probably see, are barely visible. So what we'll want to do is we're going to want to bring in another map, which is going to be the Corona color correct map. Then we'll plug the fingerprint imperfection map into it. Then we'll plug the Corona color correct map into that mask one slot in our layered material. Okay. So uh, we are doing this because now we'll be able to increase the contrast in the fingerprint bitmap so that it has a stronger effect. So just by playing with the contrast a little bit and then uh, with the brightness as well, okay, um, you're going to see that we can very easily and very quickly create this real punchy version of our fingerprint map, which is exactly what we want to do here because now the whitest parts of our fingerprint map, so where the actual fingerprints are at, those parts are now even whiter, which means because we are using this imperfection map as a mask, well, that means that more of that layer one material is going to be coming through here, right? And as for the totally darkest parts, uh, that's where the layer one material won't be coming through at all. So we're just tweaking the mask here, basically. Now, as a quick tip, with these kinds of imperfection maps that you're putting on glass materials, uh, you do want to make sure that there's enough of that completely black color in your map, just because typically certain parts of glass materials are um, totally fresh looking without any imperfections, basically. So you really want to make sure that not every part of your glass material is affected, right? And as a bit of a rule of thumb, you also don't want your widest parts to be extremely contrasty because typically fingerprints smudge a little bit. So there's an actual fingerprint and around it is a bit of that smudginess happening. So typically you want there to be a slight grayish halo around the parts where the fingerprints are at. Okay. Okay. And um, as another quick tip, if you don't want to mess with the brightness and the color parameters, you can instead play with the curves as well. It totally depends on what you find more intuitive to tweak, of course. Okay, so if we take a look at our rendered image, the fingerprints are really starting to show up real nicely, but clearly our uh, fingerprint material is not really set up correctly at all yet, as it's just this whitish diffuse material. And so it kind of looks like this weird dust or dirt that's on our glass. And so let's set this material up so that it looks more like a fingerprint material would look like. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to help myself out and I'm going to use the water preset okay, um, as my base. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go under the media options rollout and I'm just going to disable uh, the volumetric scattering because that might be a bit of an overkill for this kind of a setup. And 
then, since this is a sort of an imperfect fat slash greasy material, we could also up the roughness a little bit. So we're just going to up it to 0 0.2 or thereabouts. And we could maybe up the IOR a bit as well, because I'd imagine fat slash grease would be would have a slightly higher higher IOR than water. But obviously, if you're into super realism, you'd be encouraged to find actual IOR values for fat slash grease. Although, I think it's fairly safe to say that in this case, uh, the difference would be somewhat negligible. So an IOR value of 1.4, I think it's going to work just fine. And so that's pretty much the way you can add imperfections on top of your glass materials. As you've seen, the workflow is pretty easy, pretty straightforward in so many ways. And the results, as you can see, are really realistic. Now with imperfections, you obviously don't want to overdo them. But it is up to you to be creative. So if you want to overdo them or if you do want to make them look just super, super subtle, well, that's totally up to you and your creative vision. But the workflow would stay the same, right? Now, what's really cool about the workflow we just showcased is that if you wanted to opt for actual dirt instead of fingerprints, well, you could easily do that. Just change up the fingerprint bitmap with a dust bitmap. Bring in, you know, its own color correct um, map, plug the dirt map into it, adjust it accordingly, right? So I think these values here are going to work just fine for me. Plug it into the mask one slot of your layered material. And then, and then, all you need to do is you just need to set up your dirt material accordingly. So I'm just going to go with a default preset. Okay, then I'm going to adjust the color a little bit. I guess I'm going to go with this, uh, well, a brownish looking color, I suppose. So kind of sort of like this. Uh, there we go. Let's drop the value a little bit. There we go. Kind of like that. Okay. And then maybe I could even... Uh, lower the roughness down a little bit to 0 0.5. And before you know it, you have this dirt on your glass that is not refractive. It has its own material properties, and it's just sort of sitting right there on top of that glass material. Now, could you further improve this dirt material? Why, absolutely yes, you could. You could plug in a diffuse texture map into it. You could plug in a roughness imperfection map into the roughness lot. And you could also even add some bumps and bruises in the form of bump maps or normal maps. But, you know, that's something you can totally experiment on your own. General workflow is going to stay exactly like the one we just showcased. Now, one quick tip at this point. You're probably going to notice that our dirt is being applied on the outside as well as the inside of our glass here. But we can very quickly set it up so that the dirt is only applied to the outside parts of our glass here. So uh, let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to go into the perspective view here. Okay, I'm going to jump into the edge um, mode here. And I'm just going to select one of these top edges right here. I'm going to convert them into polygons. And then I'm just going to select one of the polygons on the inside right here. Then what I'll do is I'm going to go under the modify selection, in my modeling ribbon here, and I'm just going to use the fill hole command. So that's going to select all of those inner polygons for me. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set a unique ID for these polygons here. So I'm going to go with an ID of two. I'm going to make sure that the rest of the polygons, so the inverted selection of what we previously had, I want all these to be set to ID 1. And so now what I can do here is I can bring in a multi-sub object material. I'm going to set it to only a feature two um, IDs here. And now I'll apply it to the glass, just like that. And I'll drag the glass material, sorry, the uh, layered material into uh, the number one slot here in my multi sub object material. And the clean glass material I'm going to put into the number two slot, just like that. And so now, as you can see, the glass is only dirty on the outside and it's not dirty on the inside. And again, you could further tweak the setup, add more details to it. Um, Maybe, you know, add more layers of dust and grime and fingerprints too. 
But at that point, you're just being creative and the workflow sort of stays the same to what we just showcased. All right, we're really on track here. And the last thing we'd like to showcase to you here is how you can set up a liquid substance to be in this glass. Now, typically, you already have your liquid already modeled. But if you don't, well, here's a quick tip on how you can do that real quickly. So just go into the edge mode, select one of the inner edges inside your glass, convert that selection into a polygon selection, and then just select an additional polygon sort of on the inside there. Then go into your modify selection menu and just hit the fill hole command. Okay. Now what you want to do is you just want to detach these inner parts as a clone and you just want to give this thing a proper name. We're going to call it liquid and just hit OK. Now, if I select this thing and I isolate it, well, now what we can do is we can cap it off at the top, of course. And then what you should also make sure is uh, sort of set up correctly here is the normals. The normals should be pointing outward. So in this case, they aren't. So I'm just going to hit the flip command just like that. OK, now at this stage, what we can do is we can apply uh, a material to this liquid object and we have a juice orange material sort of pre-prepared here. I'm just going to apply that. And if we take a look at our interactive render, well, you're going to very quickly be able to see that what we're getting is not really pleasant looking at all. It's pretty bad. And that is because we do need to set up one additional thing here. And so if I go into my front view, you're going to be able to notice that my liquid mesh, my liquid object is perfectly intersecting the inner parts of my glass object. And that's not going to work well here. What you want to make sure is happening is that the liquid object is slightly bigger than the inner parts of the glass. You want them to be kind of protruding through the inner parts of the glass a little bit. Okay. Now to set that up, I'm going to need to scale up the liquid object a little bit. And to do that, I'm just going to have to uh, make sure that my pivot point is centered to my liquid object correctly. And then all I need to do is I just need to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. And so that's pretty much all that there is to it. Just make sure that your liquid mesh, your liquid object is slightly bigger than the inner part of the container. In our case, the inner parts of our glass here. And they'll get you these cool looking, physically realistic and accurate results. Now, one thing we could still do here, because we are nice people, is we could just apply the clean glass material to our glass object here because, yeah, you know, getting poisoned because of drinking juice out of a dirty glass. Well, that probably ain't no fun. Anyhow, with that life hazard out of the way, we're concluding this tutorial and the series as a whole. We sincerely hope you've enjoyed the journey here and that you've learned something new. This series was designed to get you going with the physical material. So it was primarily aimed at the more beginner users, but we did try to sprinkle in some extra information here and there. So again, thank you for tuning into these. It's been a real pleasure introducing the physical material to you all. And in case you're worried we won't be doing any more physical material tutorials, well, we most certainly will. It's just that they won't be part of this introductionary series. So keep an eye out for more tutorials. And as always, take care, everybody.